Hi everybody, today we're going to take a look at modeling data and correlation and we will tie this into Mobius to make sure if you're using Mobius you know how to put in the answers correctly. When we model data, we're trying to find a function that matches the data being studied. In our case, we're looking for a line that fits the data. Usually the line won't perfectly match our points. The line found for modeling data is often called the line of best fit or the trend line. Trend lines are often found by plotting the data points and then using mathematical software to find the linear equation that best matches the set of points. Today I'll show you both Excel and Desmos and just how easy it is to find the line of best fit using that equipment. Here we have Y and it kind of has this little like carrot on top of it so I'm going to call it Y hat. Y hat is MX plus B. So M is the slope of the line, it says how the line is changing. And B is the y-intercept, it shows us where the line started. There are different ways to express the line. So if you see this in different books or on different websites, I want you to know they all mean the same thing. It's just a choice of notation. So you might see y equals ax plus b. You might see y equals a plus bx. The important thing to remember is that the number in front of the x shows us how much the value is changing. So pay attention to the way the question is asked. And if you're looking for the change, Look for wherever x is, take the coefficient of that, and that will be your slope. When you go to the technology, it will spit out something called the correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficients are used to measure how strong a relationship is between the two variables. The formula returns a value that's between negative 1 and 1, where a positive 1 indicates a really strong, like perfect positive relationship, and a negative 1 indicates a strong, and again perfect, negative relationship. The values are probably somewhere between there usually. So a result of zero indicates no relationship at all. So closer to one, closer to positive one, says we have a positive relationship. Closer to negative one, says we have a negative relationship. Great news though, we don't have to do the calculation. It's built onto Desmos, it's built into Excel, and we are going to rely on those programs to come up with the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient will be symbolized by the lowercase level r. We also have something called the coefficient of determination. It's just going to take the correlation coefficient and we're going to square it. It's usually stated as a percent. r squared represents the percent of variation predicted by the line of best fit. For example, say that r squared was 0.8489. This says approximately 85% of the variation can be explained by the best fit regression line. If you are using Mobius, it will be important to pay attention to this. When you enter your coefficient of determination, you are first going to round r to two decimal places, then you square the result. So say you did a problem and you got an r value equaling negative 0.7689. To get your coefficient of determination, you're going to say r is negative 0.77. So see, I've rounded it to two places. And now I'm going to square that. So negative 0.77 squared gives me an r squared that 0.5. 929. So you can't go from the r that you get, make it down to two decimal places, and then square it when you're doing your coefficient of determination. Let's take a look at these correlation coefficients. So in the first example, I have an r, which is 0.4. So it's positive, but you can see this line. I kind of have a sprinkling of dots all around it. So it's not a very strong positive correlation, but it is positive because when I look to left to right, the dots are going up. And the second one, you have R0. There's nothing really happening here except a bunch of dots, and so we don't have any correlation to talk about. Then on the far right, I have this line going down, and again, you can see it does look like it's going down. The values are getting smaller, but they don't perfectly fit around our line. I think this is a nice example of a lot of correlation coefficients where you can see here's this perfect fit at one, still close together, but not as perfect at 0.8, starting to look like a disaster at 0.4, nothing correlated here at zero, and then start to go down negative, negative, and then perfect again. So the lines don't have to have any certain slope to them for them to be ones. So here's different slopes that are still all perfectly correlated. Here's zero, and here's negative one, again with different slopes. And then this bottom one, where it's just a bunch of different shapes, that would be zero. Which of these graphs has a positive correlation? So hopefully you can see I labeled them A, B, C, and D. So positive means I should read from left to right. So for A, it's starting here and it's going up, so I would call that positive. B looks like it's going here and going down, so I would call that negative. 
C also looks like it's starting up and going down, so that's negative. And then the last one, D, looks like on the left it's going up to the right. So I would say A and D are both positive. I would say B and C are both negative. If you had to guess which one had the best correlation, it looks like B is a little more scattered. It looks like D is a little more scattered. So A looks like it has better correlation. C looks like it has better correlation. They look closer to lines. So let's take this word problem that talks about kind of a catch and release thing with the bird. So a scientists are going to tag sparrow hawks in 13 different colonies to study their population. They gather the data for the percent of new sparrow hawks in each colony and the percent of those that have returned from migration. So we have percents return, we have percents new. We're going to enter the data, it says in a calculator, so we will do that. We're going to make a scatter plot. Then we're going to use the calculator's regression function to find the equation of the least squares regression line, and we're going to add it to our scatter plot. Super important note here, it says what is the equation of the least squares regression line? Use x to represent the percent of return. So as we enter in, one of them will be x, the other one will be y, so it's important that you pick up from the problem which one's supposed to be which. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first going to go to Desmos and show you how to do this. First thing that's important in Desmos is I need to hit this plus. So plus is gonna say what do you want to add and I wanna add a table. Notice it added an x and a y. So the x's were our returns. So we had 75, 66, 85, 53, 73, 62, 41, 65, 44, 60, 46, 38. Now in the Y's, I'm gonna put the new. So 6, 6, 8, 14, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 15, 20, 20. It doesn't look like it's anything at first, but if you hit this zoom, zoom fit magnifying glass, it will plot all the points. So there's our scatter plot. Just from what we talked about, you can see this looks like the correlation is negative. It's going down from left to right. Um, and it's mild, right? It's not a perfect match, but we should expect it to be a mild match. So we need Desmos to tell us what this line is. So you're going to type Y and then the number one. I didn't push up, I didn't push down, I just picked Y and 1, and it says, oh, look, you're picking from a 13 element list. Then you need to use this button called tilde. So I'm going to go up to show you on the keyboard under ABC. It's on the bottom row. This is the symbol I'm using. You can also find it on your computer. It's usually right under the escape key. So if you look under escape, you might have to push shift to get it, but you have it on your keyboard as well. Okay, right, I'm going to type A, then I'm going to type X1. I need it to draw in from my data, so I have to tell it to go to the X1, and then I'm going to say plus B. So here's my line. I can see it's going down, which we expected it to. You can see it gave you both the R and the R squared. So the R is negative because it's going down. R squared will always be positive. And squares are always positive. So let's go ahead and type that in so I can show you. Negative 0.27x plus 30.09. If you want to check before you go any further, you can hit how did I do? And it says good job. That way you can check and see if you got any of the numbers off before you go on and do any answers. Okay. So the next part says the slope of this least squared line is. Well, that's where we're pulling this negative 0.27. So for each percentage increase in return of birds, the percentage of new birds in the colony will decrease, and that's because it's negative, by, we're going to say, 0.27. Again, if you want to check that, hit how did I do? The y-intercept of the least squares line is, well, that's our other number we got, which is 30.09. That was our y-intercept, which means when there are no returning sparrowhawks, there will be almost, we're going to put 30. 0, 09 again. So we're just repeating that number twice. New sparrow hawks, and let's hit how did I do? And it says good job. So you can see we're clicking these off. All right, the next part says how well did the regression line fit the data? Explain your answer. So round your answer to two decimal places. So the coefficient of determination indicates that. So the coefficient of determination 
is the r squared. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do a little bit of work here. We're first going to round the r to negative 0 0.80. So remember I said we're going to round it to two decimal places, and I'm going to square it. So that says 0.64. So I'm going to go back to Mobius, and I'm going to say the coefficient of determination indicates that 64% of the variation in the percent of new birds is explained by the model. Next it says the correlation coefficient is, so we had a negative 0.7961. It's going to allow me to put all four digits in for R, but only two when I go to do the coefficient of determination. This indicates a fairly we're going to say strong. It's closer to 1 than it is to 0, so that being closer to negative 1 than 0 says that's strong. So again, let's hit how did I do, checking our work, and so far so good. So the last piece says, an ecologist wants to predict how many birds will join another colony of sparrows to which 56% of the adults from the previous year have returned. So again, this is the return, and when we look back up, we based X as our return. So what we want to do here is we want to say 56 times A plus B. We are just using the values in Desmos, right? It remembers what A is, it remembers what B is, that way I don't have to write them down. This says 14.92, I'm just gonna round to two decimal places. So let's write in here, 14.92. I know it says percent, but the whole problem was worded in percent, so that's good. And that says that's what I want. So give yourself time, write everything down. If you don't like Desmos, you are of course welcome to do the same thing in Excel. So I'm gonna show you in Excel, except I'm not gonna fill in all this data. So in Excel, I put together a sheet, I put in the X's and the Y's, based just like we did last time. But if I want Excel to do it, I'm going to start by highlighting the two rows, and I'm going to say Insert, and you want to do a scatter plot. From the scatter plot then, I want it to add a line. So you can hit here the plus for the chart elements, and you're looking for trend line. So you can see it put the line on there. I want to hit this arrow over and do a little bit more. And that's where you want to go to is more. The more that I want to do is I want to display the equation and I want to see the R squared on the chart. I'm going to move it over so you can see it. I'm also going to make that a little bigger. So we can do a little comparison of our numbers. Here we had A is negative 2.709, which rounds up to one. This is already rounded, it did three decimal places. Same thing here, 30.0926 compares to 30.93. And then the R squared, you see this 0.6637, and you see here also the 0.6637. So you have all the same values. You would have to take the square root to get to R by itself, and then you would round it to get the back to the 0.64 again. So I know that's a little different. It's not exactly what I would want it to be in Mobius, but it's what we have, so it's what we're going to do. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about was problems like this in the homework, that if you are given the X's and the Y's, and here all that happened, it's put into two separate sets of columns just because they kind of ran out of room. And then they give you all this information about X and Y that I'm gonna say absolutely do not use. What I want you to do is if you've got a problem like this is go to Desmos or go to Excel and, and use the information inside of there to figure out this answer. The key to doing this in Desmos is hitting the plus sign and hitting the table then you're entering the values. If you want to, you can hit zoom fit so you can see the data all together. And you could just type C-O-R-R -R of X1, Y1, and it will tell you the correlation of coefficient. If you want more than that, because you'd like to see the whole thing, you can go back and do the Y1 tilde AX1 plus B you can see the same correlation coefficient, the negative 0.3258, and then there's R squared. So if you don't want to do the whole thing, the Y1 is A, X1 plus B, you can type C-O-R-R, parentheses, X1 comma Y1. What it asks for is the coefficient of determination, which is this squared one, 0 0.001. 
And we're not gonna find the perfect one when we go back to Mobius, so let me show you what I would probably do instead. If you decide to just do the correlation, that's okay. You can square that, negative point. I'm gonna do like zero, three, two, six this time, just to show you. Because this one is multiple choice, so we'll be able to tell. So notice you have zero, zero, one, zero, six. So let's see whatever looks closest to that. So we have the 0.689, not that one, 0.33, not that one. Here's 0, 0, 001, that looks good, or 0, 01, too big. So we know it's this one right here. The thing that will take you the longest time is entering the data into either Excel or Desmos, but once you have it, it will be much easier than dealing with big, complicated formulas like it's alluding to in the homework. Good luck.